So do you guys agree with T.O.'s comments? Uh, Will? If, if, yeah, I'd like to go first on this, if you don't mind. Yeah. Lord Sam yours. Bradford is not being a coward, and I think it's pretty rich coming from T.O. Let me tell you what's being a coward. Coward is talking about your teammates behind their backs, like T.O. did with Jeff Garcia, like T.O. did with Donovan McNabb. Consistently sabotaging teams to get traded, that's cowardly. At least you can say Sam Bradford is putting out front and open what he wants and why he's doing it. He is being open about his motivations and why he is holding this position. That doesn't make Sam Bradford right. I ultimately think Sam Bradford is wrong, but he's not doing it because he's a coward. He's making a business decision. In my estimation, a bad business decision. But here I think is why he's doing it. He's looking at the playing field. People like T.O. are saying, go compete. Well, Bradford, and I guess for that matter, his agent Tom Conyon are saying, not a fair competition. We're not playing on an even playing field. It's not a pure meritocracy. Sam actually doesn't have a chance to win this job. The entire regime, Doug Peterson and everyone in the front office, is behind Carson Wentz. They've invested their future in draft picks and name and future jobs in Carson Wentz. They need him to succeed. They don't want Sam Bradford to succeed. They want him to be a bridge, maybe a competent bridge for a little while. Sam Bradford looks at that and goes, this is not good for my career. This is a bad decision, and he's trying to leverage into a better situation. This is where it becomes a bad business decision because there's no better situation for him to leverage into. Nobody, not the Broncos, not the Jets, are ready to take on, what is it, $11 million, $18 million, 22 over two years? Nobody wants that for what Sam Bradford has shown. So the best business decision he can make is to get on the field. The Eagles will put him on the field for probably half a season, maybe three quarters. Get on, play as well as you can. You're not the Eagles' future. You will not be the Eagles' quarterback. You've got eight to ten games to show other teams how you can play. You are playing for your next team. It's better to do that on the field with the Eagles than sitting at home pouting. But it's not cowardice that is causing this. It's bad business analysis. And by the way, Tom Condon should receive a fair amount of heat for either endorsing or pushing him in this direction. You know, you know what's not good for Sam Bradford's career is playing like Sam Bradford has played over the last several years. That's, That's what's not good for his career. Mm -hmm. Now, I do agree with you that it is a terrible business decision, that what he's doing is, look, this position, right, we, whether we like it or not, it's anointed as a leadership position, right? And every position on that field has to compete for their job. So now the quarterback doesn't have to compete for his job, so the other guys already are looking at you like, Man, listen, you got to wear the red jersey during practice. You can't get hit. And now you're going to pull this stunt where you know this kid's not going to be ready to play right away. And as you said, it's basically on, on audition for your next job. Tom Condon is a great agent. He's giving him bad advice if he is, in fact, giving him this it's advice. It's possible Sam's driving his right. bus it's and, possible. And, and Condon's trying to cover right. it up. And, and if you don't want to be treated like a journeyman, stop playing like a journeyman if you're Sam Bradford. Now, as far as T.O. is concerned, I think what ends up happening here is we end up pointing at the messenger, right, and saying, oh, look at this guy. You said, oh, look, T.O., look at his history, as if people can't evolve. Now, people can't evolve. I will say this, the other part about Terrell Owens, I don't think he said tons behind people's back. He said it in front of a lot of cameras, which I think really upset people and well, upset the let, Apple Let card. me push back real quick. T saying things in front of cameras or over this machine about someone else is not saying it to their face. If you got something well, to say... But you it, assume they it, haven't said it to their face. Well, we could get Donovan well, or Jeff Garcia here well, to see if I, he questioned Garcia's okay. sexuality to his face. I've had conversations with Brian Dawkins, who played with Terrell Owens in Philadelphia, and said that the biggest problem was that Terrell would call a horse's you-know-what, a horse's you-know-what to his face. And that was kind of the big issue that they had there. So... As far as Terrell's concerned, look, we mocked Jose Canseco about all the steroid stuff because he said, ah, look at the messenger. Okay, look at Terrell Owens. Just because the messenger isn't someone that you deem the proper messenger doesn't mean that the message isn't accurate. So the message is accurate. This is cowardice. Every position competes. He's got an opportunity to prove to his guys that he is a real leadership at a quote-unquote leadership position. I'm 100% in on Terrell Owens. Okay. Wow. Freddie? Really good by both of you guys. I'll say that, number one. <laughs> number two... With this whole deal, if you're Sam Bradford, you're in no position to say, I don't want to play there, especially when you took the $22 million in guaranteed money. If you don't want to play in Philadelphia, then you and Tom Condon give that check back to the Eagles and say, let me go on about my way, and then no one's going to call you a coward. You can't have that kind of standing in the locker room thinking you're going to be a strong guy when, A, they don't know if you're going to be there, B, you've only played a possible 21 out of 48 games in the last three years of the National Football League. We're looking at a guy that has missed a full season because he can't stay healthy. 
plenty of guys in NFL locker rooms will look at you a different way, whether they use the word coward, but they're going to use a word that's not exactly strong in your favor. And I think that's where Terrell Owens was coming from saying, hey, dude, look, they gave you $22 million based on the fact you only played 21 out of 48 games. You had 19 touchdowns and 14 interceptions last year. That was, those are pedestrian numbers in this day and age in the National Football League. Terrell Owens is always going to be too honest with his own good. As far as I'm concerned, there's no such thing as being too honest. The truth is never terrible as far as I'm concerned, especially if you are backing it up with facts. Terrell Owens would not just call somebody a coward if he did not have intel from that locker. He still knows guys in that organization that will tell him, man, we think that dude is a punk. We think that dude is a coward. Terrell Owens didn't just fly off with this off the handle. He basically knew exactly what he was saying. He was measured in his words. So he said, you know what, to be honest with you, that's kind of a coward move because that's his way of saying, dude, you are Sam Bradford. You're not Eli Manning. You're not even Tony hey. Romo. So you have no gall to go out there and say, I'm not going to play for you guys, and I've only played 21 games in the last 48. So you can say whatever you want. I think Terrell Owens got information from somebody that said, this is how we feel about Sam Bradford. And he's like, hey, you know what? If you feel that way, that's probably how I felt. One last rebuttal. I like Terrell Owens. I liked him when he was with the Cowboys. I think he should be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't think he's speaking from a place where he can indict other people for cowardice. I don't think. And by the way, we but that's always to say someone can't learn from their own mistakes. Maybe they can, George. Okay. Let's show us some evidence. I, by the way, I also think we reduce things into these character concerns way too often. They're important. They matter. And sometimes they're accurate. I think Bradford is making a bad business decision. It's True. less about him being afraid True. of Carson Wentz. He's looking at a field the same way a Division I quarterback looks at the guys recruited behind him and goes, I'm not going to get to play here. I need to transfer to Louisiana Tech or something like that where I can play. We don't call those guys cowards. We, make, we call them well, they do inside those decisions. programs. But inside, inside those programs, programs I'm telling you. They someone, absolutely but, but do. someone who played no, listen, Will, I'm Will, telling you. Will, but, I am telling yeah. you the hundred. Uh, listen, I'm with well, I covered one. the University of Miami. There was this story about a kid named Brian Forte, right? He was this kid who was like highly touted. Quarterback, there, right? Right, and transferred because he didn't want to play against all those quarterbacks that were coming out of quarterback U at the time in the 90s. And the guys in that program were like, yeah, he just didn't want to compete. And I'm telling you, within those parameters, within those walls yeah. of those buildings, they do view well, them that way. Sam yeah. is working on his next guys, but, the next yeah, locker room. Yeah. He's not worried yeah. about this right. one. Yeah. And ultimately, that's why it's a bad business decision, because I'm not is. sure he's going to be in a new locker room anytime right. soon. My, my college football coach at Mansfield, Tom L. Sasser, had a great saying. He said, if you're a real man, you are not afraid of competition. That was his way of saying, don't be a punk. If you think you're better than that guy, go out there and prove it. Sam Bradford apparently does not want to go and show people that I belong here. I'm going to be the starting quarterback, and I don't care if I'm somewhere else next year. That relays a lot in locker rooms in the National Football League. And that's why you are who you are today, because you didn't run away from the competition. Oh, man, you not straight in the face. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe our next guest can weigh in on this. Coming up, we've got a very special guest joining us right here at the First Take Debate Desk. I'll give you a hint. He's got some serious speed, has one Super Bowl bowl ring where's the number 89 and he's from gulf breeze florida yeah, he's a real man Doug not afraid of competition he he'll be so joining Doug, us Doug, right Doug, here Doug, we'll be right back good to see you, baby. how you doing man he does. so we are going to play a little game we'll call it nfc over under so we will set the win total for some notable teams and then you guys will tell us if they will be over or under that win mark is that simple enough you guys good got it yeah you got even it. a simpleton like me can understand <laughs> yeah. all right so let us begin with this, the last season's nfc champs the carolina panthers so cam newton and company made it all the way to the super bowl but then fell to peyton manning and the broncos pretty mightily now the biggest loss during the offseason cornerback Josh Norman, but they still have all their main players, such as Cam and also Luke Keekley on defense. So over under 10 and a half wins. Ready? They get to 11, so I'll take the over because I don't think they're going to go 15 and one or 14 and two. That was the kind of season that no one saw coming from Carolina. And it was really a special season. And I'm not going to have the Super Bowl take away from that because the more people doubted them, the more they kept winning. They just ran into one of the all-time great defensive runs we've seen in playoff history with the Denver Broncos. They're still a terrific team. They're still a solid team. I think Cam Newton is going to continue to be that elite quarterback or get close to that elite level. So I got the Panthers at 11. I don't think they'll get more than 11 or 12, but I got them over 10 and a half. Yeah, I've got them over two, and I've got them because, look, their division isn't great. So there's four or five wins at least there, in my opinion. And Cam Newton has hit a different level in his career. I mean, if you look at what he does both as a passer and certainly as a runner, I mean, he's 
arguably the best person we've seen there in that position at a long, long, in a long, long time. So I just think that the defense, I know the loss of Josh Norman will hurt some, but Ron Rivera's a defensive guy. I feel like they'll be able to find a way to mask that a little bit. Luke Keekley may be the best linebacker in the league at the moment, at least arguably that's the case. So I feel like because of the weak division, because of the ascension of Cam, he's hit a different stride in his career. I like them over 10 and a half. This is insulting. They won 15 <laughs> games last year. You're telling me Josh Norman is worth five I didn't choose games? Numbers. We were just talking during the break that Vegas is really pretty good. You look at most of these over-under lines, it's hard to pick which way a team's going to go one way or the other. Unanimously, easily, we all went over on the Panthers. Right. I'm, I'm sorry, Josh Norman's great. He's not five games worth. So you're right. I mean, I don't expect him to go 15-1 again, 14-2 again, but I still got 13-3 and 12-2 and 12-2 and, and 11-5 and to get him over 10 and a half. Mm -hmm. I fully expect the Panthers to go over this. This is, this is bad, bad odds making as far as I'm concerned. Panthers easily over. All right, all right. Now let's talk about your Ann Wills team, the Dallas Cowboys. So, hey, it can only go up from last season, right? They finished, <laughs> well, we, one would think. 